Irish Catholic martyrs Irish, na eran, were dozens of people who have been sanctified in varying degrees for dying for their Roman Catholic faith between 1537 and 1714 in Ireland. The canonization of Oliver Plunkett in 1975 brought an awareness of the other men and women who died for the Catholic faith in the 16th and 17th centuries. On the 22nd of September 1992 Pope John Paul II proclaimed a representative group from Ireland as martyrs and beatified them. Martyr was originally a Greek word meaning witness. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter, speaking to those in Jerusalem at Pentecost, claimed he and all the apostles were martyrs, that is, witnesses, in this case to Jesus's resurrection. Later the word came to mean a person who followed the example of Christ and gave up their lives rather than deny their faith. Topic individuals formally recognized topic Canonized 12 October 1975 by Pope Paul VI. Oliver Plunkett, Archbishop of Armagh, 1 July 1681 at Tyburn, London, beatified 1920 topic Beatified 15 December 1929 by Pope Pius XI. John Carey, a.k.a. Terence Carey, layman, 4 July 1594 at Dorchester, England Patrick Salmon, layman, 4 July 1594 at Dorchester, England the 22nd of November 1987 by Pope John Paul II. Charles Meehan, alias Mahoney, Franciscan, 21 August 1679, Ruthen, Wales 27 September 1992 by Pope John Paul II. Margaret Birmingham Ball, 1584, Dublin Patrick Kavanagh, 5 July 1581, Wexford Edward Cheevers, 5 July 1581, Wexford Dominic Collins, Jesuit lay brother from Yoel, County Cork, 31 October 1602 John Carney, Franciscan Prior of Cashel, 1653 Matthew Lambert, 5 July 1581, Wexford Maurice McKenretty, Chaplain to the Earl of Desmond, 1585 Robert Myler, 5 July 1581 1581, Wexford Terence Albert O'Brien O.P., Bishop of Emily, 31 October 1651 Connor O'Devany, Franciscan Bishop of Down and Connor, of February 1612 Patrick O'Haley, Franciscan Bishop of Mayo, 31 August 1579 Peter O'Higgins O.P., Prior of Nas, 23 March 1642 Dermot O'Hurley, Archbishop of Cashel, 20 June 1584 Patrick O'Loughran, Priest from County Tyrone the 11th of February 1612 Con O'Rourke, Franciscan priest, the 31st of August 1579 Francis Taylor, former mayor of Dublin 1621 William Turry, Augustinian priest from Cork, the 12th of May 1654 Topic Other martyrs Gelasius O'Quillianane, Cistercian abbot of Boyle, the 21st of November 1580 Topic History The persecution of Catholics in Ireland in the 16th and 17th centuries came in waves, caused by a reaction to particular incidents or circumstances, with intervals of comparative respite in between. Topic Henry VIII Religious persecution of Catholics in Ireland began under King Henry VIII then Lord of Ireland after his excommunication in 1533. The Irish Parliament adopted the Acts of Supremacy, establishing the King's ecclesiastical supremacy. Some priests, bishops, and those who continued to pray for the Pope were tortured and killed. The Treasons Act 1534 caused any act of allegiance to the Pope to be considered treason. Many were imprisoned on this basis. In 1536, Charles Reynolds was posthumously convicted of high treason for successfully persuading the Pope to excommunicate Henry VIII of England. In 1537, John Travers, the Chancellor of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Dublin, was executed under the Act of Supremacy. Elizabeth I Relations improved after the accession of the Catholic Queen Mary in 1553–58, and in the early years of the reign of her sister Queen Elizabeth I after Mary's death in November 1558, Elizabeth's Parliament passed the Act of Supremacy of 1559, which re-established the Church of England's separation from the Catholic Church. Initially, Elizabeth adopted a moderate religious policy. The Acts of Supremacy and Uniformity 1559, the Prayer Book of 1559, and the 39 Articles 1563 were all Protestant in doctrine, but preserved many traditionally Catholic ceremonies. In 1563 the Earl of Essex issued a proclamation, by which all priests, secular and regular, were forbidden to officiate, or even to reside in Dublin. 
Fines and penalties were strictly enforced for absence from the Protestant service, before long, torture and death were inflicted. Priests and religious were, as might be expected, the first victims. They were hunted into mountains and caves, and the parish churches and few monastic chapels which had escaped the rapacity of Henry VIII. During the early years of her reign, no great pressure was put on Catholics to conform to the established church of the new regime, but the situation changed rapidly from about 1570 onwards, mainly as a result of Pope Pius V's papal bull Regnans in Excelsis, which released Elizabeth I's subjects from their allegiance to her. In Ireland the first Desmond Rebellion was launched in 1569, at almost the same time as the Northern Rebellion in England. The Wexford martyrs were found guilty of treason for aiding in the escape of James Eustace, 3rd Viscount Baltonglass and refusing to take the oath of supremacy and declare Elizabeth I of England to be the head of the Church. <laughs> Charles II During this period, the English persecution of Catholics in Ireland was more lenient than usual, owing to the sympathy of the king, until the Popish Plot, a fictitious conspiracy concocted by Titus Oates, between 1678 and 1681 gripped the kingdoms of England and Scotland in anti-Catholic hysteria. Those caught up in the false allegations included Peter Talbot, Archbishop of Dublin died in prison, November 1680, Oliver Plunkett, Archbishop of Armagh, executed at Tyburn 1 July 1681 Topic. Investigations Irish martyrs suffered over several reigns. There was a long delay in starting the investigations into the causes of the Irish martyrs for fear of reprisals. Further complicating the investigation is that the records of these martyrs were destroyed, or not compiled, due to the danger of keeping such evidence. Details of their endurance in most cases have been lost. The first general catalogue is that of Father John Hooling, S.J., compiled in Portugal between 1588 and 1599. It is styled a very brief abstract of certain persons whom it commemorates as sufferers for the faith under Elizabeth. After Catholic emancipation in 1829, the cause for Oliver Plunkett was revisited. As a result, a series of publications on the whole period of persecutions was made. The first to complete the process was Oliver Plunkett, Archbishop of Armagh, canonized in 1975 by Pope Paul VI. Plunkett was certainly targeted by the administration and unfairly tried. Topic. Biographies Topic. John Carney John Carney was born in Cashel, County Tipperary and joined the Franciscans at the Kilkenny Friary. After his novitiate, he went to Leuven in Belgium and was ordained in Brussels in 1642. Returned to Ireland, he taught in Cashel and Waterford, and was much admired for his preaching. In 1650 he became guardian of Carrick on Sir, Co Tipperary. During the Cromwellian persecutions, he was arrested and hanged in Clonmel, Co Tipperary. He was buried in the chapter hall of the suppressed friary of Cashel. Topic. Peter O'Higgins O.P. Peter O'Higgins was born in Dublin around 1602 during the persecution under James I. He was educated secretly in Ireland and later in Spain. With the accession of Charles I in 1625, a limited tolerance obtained and Peter came back to Dublin and was sent to reopen the Dominican house in Nas. The 1641 rebellion, a result of the plantations, evictions and persecutions but not in County Kildare, brought with it years of conflict between Irish v Old English, Catholic v Protestant, Puritan v Anglican. During this time the William Pillsworth, Protestant rector of Donadia, was arrested by rebel soldiers and about to be hanged, when Fr. Peter O'Higgins stepped forward. Pillsworth later wrote that when he was on the gallows, a priest whom I never saw before, made a long speech on my behalf saying that this, dot was a bloody inhuman act that would, draw God's vengeance on them. Whereupon I was brought down and released. The government army moved on Nas in February 1642 and O'Higgins was arrested and turned over to Governor Coote of Dublin. O'Higgins was offered his life if he would renounce his faith. He responded, quote, quote, So hear the condition on which I am granted my life. They want me to deny my religion. I spurn their offer. 
I die a Catholic and a Dominican priest. I forgive from my heart all who have conspired to bring about my death. Quote, Among the crowd at the foot of the scaffold was William Pillsworth who shouted out, This man is innocent. This man is innocent. He saved my life. Quote, William Pillsworth was not wanting in courage, but his words fell on deaf ears. With the words, Deo gratias. On his lips Peter O'Higgins died on 23 March 1642. The most likely reason for prior Higgins' execution without trial was that on the previous day, the 22nd of March, at a synod at Kells, County Meath chaired by Archbishop Hugh O'Reilly, the Catholic bishops had pronounced the rebellion to be a holy and just war. Higgins had been summarily executed as a result. Legacy. Various churches have been dedicated to the martyrs, including Church of the Irish Martyrs, Ballyrain, Letterkenny Church of the Irish Martyrs, Ballycane, Nas Church of the Irish Martyrs, Cromwell, Otago, New Zealand Church of the Irish Martyrs, Mallee Border Parish, Lamaru, South Australia, Australia See also English Reformation List of Catholic Martyrs of the English Reformation References Sources New Catholic Dictionary, Irish Martyrs External links Catholic Ireland. Net.